Have you ever wished you could select multiple options from a dropdown in Google Sheets? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to write a simple script, less than 20 lines, and I'm going to walk you through it step by step. So that way you can implement this on your own projects and be able to multi-select wherever you want on your Google Sheet. So let's jump right in. First of all, let's look at the drop down options that you need to make sure this will work. So we're going to go ahead and add a drop down here. I'm going to do drop down from a range and then select our range here. And then the most important thing to do is to make sure you go down to advanced options and check show a warning, not reject input. Otherwise, this will not work. And then I'm just going to do arrow. I think it looks a little cleaner, especially in this layout and then we'll click done. And so that's all you need on this end. And then we're gonna go ahead and create the app script. And we'll make this project. So we're going to use a simple on edit. And so you do not need to authorize this. And so for that, we're going to use the on edit function name. And so make sure you use this on edit. And then you fill this with anything to grab that argument, we're just gonna use E, you can, some people do event or something like that, but this just contains data about what was edited. So let's go ahead and get our variables. So we're gonna start with range, then we're going to get column and row, and then let's get the value. And then finally, the old value. And so this is the old value before we edited it. So old value. As you can see, this old value, we don't go from the range, we actually go back to the E, and that's a specific part in that object. So finally, we're going to get the sheet, and we're going to use this e.source, and we're not gonna use the spreadsheet app, part because that requires authorization. And so we're going to do this way to keep it simple. And then what we're going to do is let's do if old val is not equal to undefined. And so what we want to make sure is that if it's blank, old val will be undefined in this event object. And so we want to make sure we're not doing, running this if old val is blank, meaning there wasn't anything in the cell to begin with. But if there is something in the in the cell beforehand, and so that would what this would be rendering as. So if old val was not blank, then we want to determine a new value that we're going to do. And so what we want to do is append the new value to the old value. So we're going to take that old val, and then we're going to do plus and a comma. And you can add a space if you like a space between your items. Otherwise, you can leave it like that. And then we just need to add that new value and replace what was in it. So get range row call and set value new val. And so this is all it takes for the script to run. We will come back and add a few things just to make sure it runs more reliably in an expected way. So let's go ahead and jump right in and see how this works. So if we select an item, Nothing happens because the original value was blank. There was nothing in that cell. But as soon as we select another item, then it comes back and appends it. And so the nice thing is this works no matter where we are. And so we can select, for example, give wrapping, and then maybe we're gonna personalize it as well. And then it returns like that. We can come over here and select a name. And then we can select another name, for example, and then those get appended. Now the downside is this also works wherever you are. And so then you have some unexpected things like this. And then as another example, maybe we want to reset. And so um, one thing to note, like for example, here we have black and green. So we can't just natively pop that out because we don't have a way to deselect one item out of that. And so the way you do that would be to delete it, which is gonna bring up another issue, is that pop right back up. And if you notice, there's another comma there. And so there's two things we need to address. So one is that if we try to clear out a cell, 
right now it's popping back up. And so what we need to do is add another condition and say if value is equal to blank, in other words, we're trying to delete it, we're gonna say return, and return means to exit the script. So we just add that and go back in here now. Now we can delete this and it won't pop back up. So that's, that's a quick solution there. Now what about this one? So we don't want it to just apply anywhere. And so let's jump in here and see what we can do. So first of all, one thing we can do is we can get the sheet name. And so I'll just show you really quickly how we can do that. So we can just say sheet name is sheet.getName. And so one thing we could say is we only want this to work on certain sheets. So we could say if sheet name is equal to dropdowns. And then we could run it based on that. And let me make sure this syntax is correct if it goes outside of the parentheses. And so this would be one way to iron it down. However, our issue here isn't about it running on the wrong tab, it's running in the wrong ranges. So maybe we want to restrict it to certain columns. So we could say C, D, or I. And in that case, what we could do is, and we could put it in here, or we could put it in a little further down. We could put it inside this. For example, we could say if call is equal to three or call is equal to four as an example. And that's one way we could do it. We could also do it inside here and we could do if sheet name is equal to, and one thing to note, I didn't explain this, but I have double equals and so that's a comparative and it's saying if sheet name is equal to dropdowns. If I do one, it's literally gonna change sheet name to dropdowns. So the double equals is a test it's saying, is sheet name equal to dropdowns? And the result is gonna be either true or false. So enough ex explanation there. So I'm just gonna show you how to append if you want to do something like this, for example, inside one, uh, I actually did the wrong thing, I did paste instead of copy. And so this is how you could add those together and do multiple conditions inside here. So we could say if sheet name is equal to dropdowns and column is equal to three or column is equal to four. And notice I have these parentheses in here. And if I didn't have these, then this wouldn't work correctly because this or is looking um, for either or, so it doesn't apply correctly in that result. So if I do this parentheses, it means if sheet name is equal to dropdowns and column is three or column is four. So we have one more actually over here that we need to do. So let me, instead of counting this, let me just type in this, so nine. And so we could do call equals to nine. So we'll just do it all together here just to keep in one line there. And then, so now in this case, it's only gonna run if the sheet name is dropdowns. And so if you're like, well, what happens if I have more than one sheet name? We're just gonna copy this. And we could say drop down tab two, and you can do the same thing. So depending upon what the settings are, let's say it's gonna be the same column each time. Maybe you could just have, if column is equal to three um, as your overarching, and then just, it's called nesting these if statements. And so each if statement has these curly braces, the beginning and end. And so whatever you put inside here is only gonna run if this is true. And so that would be a way to nest it. And so it's just gonna test if column three is equal to, and in that case, you get rid of these and just do if sheet name is equal to. Um, but you could also do this or in the same way, and you could do. So there's about 10 ways to skin this cat. Um, so you can kind of play around with it. But in general, just think of what's your biggest way um, of dicing that. And so is there anything in common? If each sheet name is gonna have different columns, for example, then this would be a better solution. If they're all gonna have the same columns, then you could put the columns up top um, and so forth. Now, one more thing to keep in mind here is that currently we're only restricted by column, not by row. And so technically a merge cell, just so you know, um, in a script, it's acting as the first column. And so this whole thing here, even though it's merged across all of them, it's treating it as if it's in cell C3. So if our column 
three is allowed, then this would still be messing up. So what we're gonna do is just add a rows, and let's just do rows is greater than five, or we could do greater than or equals to six. So we're just gonna add that in here. Row is greater than or equals to six. Another double ampersand. And so that combines these conditions here along with this or inside here. So at this point, we should be working fine and not resulting in unexpected behavior. So we can modify this now and it's not popping back up. And so now we can come back in here, test this out. And it's still working fine right here. Let's just do one more test to make sure everything's working correctly. And then we'll wind this up. So one thing to note is that you cannot take an item out of this. You'd have to go back and reselect. So I am releasing a new video on using a sidebar that has checkboxes. And so it allows you to grab these options and then through a checkbox, select which ones you want. And then it also means you can take a drop down like this. You can pull it into the sidebar and then deselect certain options and put them back in. So if you have not subscribed to my channel, now would be a good time to do so. So you'll get notified when that video drops and then you can check that out as well. So thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day and see you soon.